when you're ready. Ever since the first cars were created, there have been questions as to the safety of these machines and how they'll affect both those using them and society in general. When examining trends and safety measures, there has been a clear increase in the burden of safety falling on the consumer to minimize distractions in order to prevent safety rather than companies improving safety measures. As more data has been collected, it is also apparent that there are two age groups consistently that have the most safety issues while driving. These age groups are those over the age of 75 and people under the age of 21. But when emphasizing, when comparing these two age groups, one key difference is that teenagers, that for teenagers, the leading cause of death is from fatal car accidents. With this statistic, it leaves many, including myself, to wonder why teenagers are so vulnerable to car crashes. Through research, scientists have identified several key reasons that teenagers have are more distracted while driving. This includes risk taking, poor judgment, and a lack of experience on the road. Along with this, there's an overall sense of mortality that carries on to their driving with young people. But along with these problems, there's also a large biological element that plays a big factor into teenagers being prone to making bad decisions while driving. This comes from two portions of the brain called the amygdala and the frontal cortex. The amygdala is the area of the brain which is responsible for more immediate emotional actions. And this area of the brain fully matures around age 12, while the frontal cortex doesn't develop until age 25. The frontal cortex is the area of the brain that controls more of our ca cautious, logical decision making. And due to the difference in maturity of these areas of the brain, teenagers are far more likely to rely on the amygdala during decision making, leading to decisions being more driven by emotions rather than logic and cautious, thoughtful decision making. But with these inevitable challenges that impact teenagers' driving ability, it is crucial to identify how our active choices within cars affect driving performance. One of these active choices is having the presence of music while driving. This leads to my overall question being, how does music affect reaction time for teenagers while driving? When examining prior studies on how music affects driving ability, it has been found that since music has such a great influence on mood, it can also impact driving behavior. In other studies, it has been found that fast tempo music is known to decrease hazard perception while increasing stress and mental load, which is the opposite for slower tempo music. Another study that I really looked over was the self-selected music versus experimenter-selected music study. In this, it determined how driving performance and hazard prevention was impacted by the subjects picking their own music versus the experimenter picking their music. And throughout this study, it was found that subjects had the poorest driving performance when listening to experimenter selected music. However, throughout all of these studies, there is a common lack of testing on drivers under the age of 18. And this is especially important due to many statistics showing how teenagers are much more vulnerable to be involved in crashes and just the fatal accident rate for this age group. With this understanding of the scholarly research, I could start to develop my methodology for my experiment. The first step of my experiment was to send a survey to grades 10 through 12 at my high school to determine what genres of music are the most popular for students to listen to while driving. In the survey, I asked for each person to rank their first, second, and third choice of music to listen to while driving. Once these had been selected, I then calculated through a ranked choice format what the most popular genres were. This ranked choice format added more weight to the first choice rather than 
the person's third choice of what they listen to. Due to this calculation, the top genres listened to at this high school were pop, hip hop slash rap, and country music. With these genres selected, the next step was to gather test subjects who fit my criteria of having a driver's license and being within the ages of 18 to of 16 to 18. From this, I gathered 40 volunteers who are willing to do the driving test simulator. With these subjects, I created my plan for testing in which each subject would listen to no music and classical music as a constant stabilizing variable in the experiment, while also classical music serves as the least selected genre of music to test how music you prefer to listen to versus music you may not prefer to listen to affects reaction time. Then, for the last category of preferred music, subjects had a choice between pop, rap, and country music. But an important variable in this experiment was to add an element of randomization. So to do this, I randomly assigned the order of these tests to help with the randomization and to prove a direct cause between the music and reaction time, not just the order of the experiments. Then, for the actual creation of my driving test simulator, I collaborated with several students in the engineering department to create the test shown here. In this test, to understand reaction time, as soon as I would press the red button, that would then turn on this light shown on the panel. Once that light turns on, it was the subject's main goal to press their foot on the white button placed on the ground as soon as possible. The reaction time between when the light turns on to when the subject presses their foot on the button would then be shown on this blue display screen for me to then add to my data table and later calculate. But before I could go any further with any type of analysis or planning statistical conclusions, I had to go, I had to formulate a hypothesis being that listening to no music will produce the fastest reaction time compared to classical or preferred music. When creating a method of analyzing the data, I collaborated with my AP statistics teacher and was able to design a calculation to directly test my hypothesis if no music produces a faster reaction time. This test would begin with a match pairs test where the no music trials would be directly compared to the classical music and preferred music trials. And the calculation would then result in a variable called a p-value, which would then be compared to the alpha value of 10%. This alpha value is a robust threshold that the p-value must be less than in order to prove that my hypothesis is correct and then be able to actually say that I have enough statistically significant evidence of this through the data collected. However, prior to reflecting on the final results of my experiment, it is crucial to identify the limitations of my experiment that happened in my methodology. This first limitation is that the subjects were aware that this test was happening and that their reaction time would be measured as soon as the light turned on. In a normal driving situation, most people aren't aware that a hazard may come into view and that they need to have a very quick reaction time to it. So that could have limited some of the data collected. Along with that, the light placement was in a very specific place and they could see the light before it turned on, which differs from a real life on the road driving experience where drivers are usually scanning the entire area in front of them rather than really focusing on one point to see if a hazard comes into view. The next limitation is the participant proportions. So originally in my method, I thought that there would be more equal numbers of people who chose pop and country and rap music, but the proportion ended up being heavily dominated by people who chose pop music, 
So I was unable to have enough people in each subgenre to do a real statistical comparison and be able to confidently say if the difference in genres had impact. Another limitation is the fact that this was a voluntary study. So the distribution of pages was something I could not control, meaning that the people who volunteered were mainly 17 and 18 year olds rather than 16 year olds who have recently gotten their license, which means that with those extra year, that extra year or two years of experience with driving, there might be better muscle memory from these people to step on the button on the ground, which is supposed to simulate a brake. Along with that, I also couldn't control the proportion of men and women who were in this study. Since it was voluntary, there ended up being more female teenagers who participated, and I couldn't do a statistical analysis to see if it's possible that music could maybe affect women driving more than men or vice versa. And then my last limitation is the fact that this experiment over the three trials it was done the exact same, and there's a possibility that between the first and the third trial, the reaction times could have gotten faster due to just being more comfortable with the test and experience with the test, creating a faster reaction time. With an understanding of these limitations, I can now examine the <coughs> calculations produced. So beginning in the comparison of the no music to classical trial, I first had to calculate the mean difference and the standard deviation in order to run a t-test and gather a p-value to compare to an alpha of 10%. The p-value calculated was 0.229, which is larger than an alpha of 10%. And due to this, I must reject my hypothesis and um, am not able to conclude that no music produces a faster reaction time than classical music. And then in the no music versus preferred genre um, comparison, the p-value between the two ended up being 0.378, which is also larger than 10%. So I must reject this hypothesis as well. Once those two tests had been conducted, I decided to do an additional test to see if there was a difference between classical music and preferred. And in this situation, I went with, in with the hypothesis that preferred music would generate a faster reaction time. But as seen, my p-value of 0.701 is larger than alpha of 10%, which means I must also reject this hypothesis. And following the calculation of these results, it is clear that this study has not yielded enough statistically significant evidence to prove a direct link impacting of music impacting reaction time while driving. But throughout my process of pre-researching and comparing my results to the studies I based my methodology off of, there's still a definite link between music having some impact on driving abilities, whether that is um, uh, reaction time or just other parts of driving abilities. And I do believe that if this experiment was repeated with far less limitations due to the method design, there's also a probability that my data could be incorrect and I could conclude in this experiment that certain types of music would have an impact on reaction time. But I do think that my research has highlighted how hard it is to exactly point out what could um, have an impact on reaction time in relation to distractions within a car. And I do believe that in, in the future, researchers must continue this discussion on research uh, and research on how teenagers' brains are affected by music and find possible ways to inform the public on the best way to limit distractions within a car and in turn save lives. Thank you. Huge round of applause. All right, thank you. Uh, some questions. Um, how did your initial exploration of the scholarly conversation lead you to your final project question? So when I was originally exploring different projects that I could have done, I was very fascinated with the brain and just the development of it. And I started to examine um, how music affects the brain. And then I started to see there's just a large gap in the research on specifically how it affects developing brains or those under 18. And
And so I also noticed around me, I had several friends who had gotten in car accidents and I was wondering if there could be a link between that. And so I decided to spotlight studies that had a connection to this and see if I could turn it into a research question. Great, thank you. Um, how did your new understanding, no, that's a question you've already been answered. What are some real world implications related to your findings? So based on my findings, I have seen through different research that music does have some effect, but it also, I think I've concluded in a way that music may not be the biggest distraction in a car while driving. And so based on that, it's important for further studies to examine other things that could impact driving performance in a car, such as drowsiness or just nighttime driving, other things that can kind of be a distraction while driving. And so I think a real world implication would be shifting focus onto some of those possibilities along with further examining music in order to prevent car accidents for teenagers. Thank you. How did you handle the uncertainty of the research process? Uh, I handled the uncertainty by doing my best to be prepared in reading studies and understanding their methodology before jumping into my plan. And then also having the understanding that something probably is going to go wrong and that I just have to be able to adapt and learn from it and listen to input of my peers and other advisors who helped me in the study. Okay, thank you. Another round of applause, another round of applause.